In today's video, what we'll have is a comparison, a look at Medicare versus Biden care, especially in light of the proposal to drop the Medicare eligibility age from 65 to 60. And we'll take a look at the cryptocurrency craze and the recent days where you've seen dramatic decline in the price of Bitcoin and others. This is not news to people in GH2 Unfiltered, which is the subscription site. We'll touch on that as well. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Much More Than Medicare YouTube channel. My name is Jay O. I'm a certified financial planner. I'm the author of Maximize Your Medicare, available on at Amazon for, I don't know, $12, wherever they're setting the price, I don't control it. Anyway, a couple of points before we get started. The first one is be sure to watch of the other videos. You know, I know it's very interesting to just say, look and for look for the snippet and then find that video, watch that video and don't return to it. But it is important to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And the reason is that things change. Things change over time. In fact, a lot of the recent videos have been dealing with the American Rescue Plan, which has dramatically changed the landscape for individual health insurance for those persons who are not yet Medicare eligible, there are going to be ripple effects to that to certain persons because it entirely changes or it can entirely change a person's retirement timeline. That is the case. These things change through time and changes to legislation, changes to market prices will also affect people's decisions. As a result, you do want to stay up to date. In addition to that, we've got something that shows right here, which is that you're being hit with a large number of news headlines. Some of them are correct, but leave out just a single sentence. And by that one sentence, it could change how it affects you, your situation, what's important to you. The thing is, you know, of course, I'm sitting here talking to myself, right? Record, make some terrible video, etc. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, is I may have mentioned a particular phrase in a singular video, which directly strikes home at you from your perspective. And that single sentence can literally change your decision making and the outcome because there are so many moving parts. I'm sensitive to that. I'm trying to hit as many as I possibly can without knowing your individual situation. Of course, if you need guidance, that is free. You can send an email. It's in the text below the video. Let's go forward. Up on the screen is an article that was just posted the other day by the AP. And it's that you can read the headline there, Medicare for 60 year olds not guaranteed to be a better deal. So the background here is that the president has decided or wants to push forward with an agenda to lower the Medicare eligibility age from 65 to 60. And it would be enormous, right? Because it would increase the number of people who are eligible for Medicare by 24.5 million people. We'll get to the source of that quote and that number in a moment. So, of course, you know, sellers of books, uh, you know, would welcome this in the sense that, well, 24.5 million people are clueless about Medicare. They have no idea how it works. They need to know it. The fastest way is to go on Amazon and buy a book. I can tell you, however, that is not going to be my expectation. 63 million current people are on Medicare with mm, about 60 million having also no idea. Those 60 million haven't bought the book, I promise you. Joking aside, here's what this article is trying to say. 
which is that Medicare, while it would help the 24.5 million people be, go on to Medicare, it's not guaranteed to be a better deal. It, the article goes on to say a bunch of things, and it quotes a study, and we will, a report, I should say, by Avalair Health. We will go to that in a few moments. But the point here is that simply expanding Medicare eligibility does not guarantee premium affordability. Now, this is true in part, but it's not for what this sentence says. This sentence by itself, in isolation, is not wrong. Not wrong. Why is that? The reason is that the American Rescue Plan Act, which I've seen all these videos, you could be able to, after you're done with this video, you can watch a list of other videos that I've been highlighting for months. That when the new president took office, that I thought that this was going to happen, and it did. The result is that the individual health insurance premium for, a, let's just call it a 63-year-old in Arizona, has pushed down individual health insurance premiums by a dramatic amount. So much so that premium can literally be zero. That does exist. There are links, et cetera, et cetera. You can click and see your free quote you know, off my links here to get your estimate. That said, what doesn't this sentence say? It says that the eligibility does not guarantee premium affordability. I agree with that because you can have individual health insurance at zero. That doesn't mean that your coverage is the same at all, okay? Etc. Etc. And you know, the article goes on. The Avalier analysis did find that traditional Medicare has an important advantage over Obamacare, which is also Biden Care is a twist on Obamacare, because hospitals and, and doctors nationwide accept it, whereas coverage through private insurers generally relies on restrictive networks. True. This is true. Medicare. Under Medicare, one of the main things that people need to know, if you're if you're watching this video because of because you're part of Beginner's Corner, it is true. The mechanism of networks under Medicare is far superior, because the overwhelming number of healthcare providers accept federal Medicare, the card that I'm showing up here on the screen. In addition, to another potential plus. The combination of traditional Medicare and a supplemental Medigap policy provides gen more generous coverage than ACA's mid-level plans. Also true, meaning under Medigap, new enrollees into Medigap do have to pay the, 200, the $205 Part B deductible. From that point, Medigap plus Medicare covers almost all hospital and Part B expenses your costs are minimized. So you can see what my point is right here. While this is true, meaning premium affordability does not guarantee premium affordability, the premium can be higher because you have to pay for Part B under Medicare. The fact of the matter is these other advantages improve the coverage enormously. The networks are not as restrictive. If you require health care costs, your out-of-pocket costs can be far lower. These, so what has happened here is the, the sentences in the article are not wrong, but they don't tell you the full story. It's kind of why it's a problem here for everyday people. You're glossing over this article to the extent you even got to this point, right? Before, you know, most people just scan, scan the headline and on they go. But if you dig a little further, even the, the details, while not wrong, aren't complete. And in fact, an entire extra sentence should actually occur here. Which is that Medicare Advantage plans, you have to have Part A and Part B, but Medicare Advantage plans can cost zero. And those networks are also very likely to be superior 
to those of a private insurance plan, whether that insurance came from the exchange or for, from your employer provided plan. The AP article from the prior segment, it largely relies on this report that you see on your screen now. It's authored by Avalair Healthcare, which is a consulting group, kind of a study group as well, and releasing certain facts about healthcare. And they are the qualified. Make no mistake about it. This is not me criticizing them at all about the quality of the personnel or necessarily their findings here. I'm going to talk about at the end of this segment about, you know, Jay's wish list of what other information they have here. Okay. But let's, so I just want to get that out in front. This is not by any means see me after class at Avalair. It isn't right. I don't presume the other person in the room is, you know, less qualified than I, they have more resources of equally, if not better qualified than I to speak on the topic from an academic point of view. No problem. You can see the summary here. New Avalara analysis finds that lowering Medicare eligibility could expand Medicare Advantage to 20 to Medicare Act coverage to 24.5 million individuals, additional 24.5 million additional individuals. They're currently above 63 going to go to another 24.5, which is not a small increase, 40%, let's call it. Uh, you know, we're not here to resolve the budgetary stress. Okay. But their point here is that Medicare, Medicare premiums may be less affordable in some cases than subsidized exchange coverage. Uh, as I said, from the prior segment, I would find no problem with this clause. None. Right. The simple reason. Florida, 63-year-old person, $40,000 income, your health insurance can be zero versus Medicare, where you have to pay $148. We'll get to some nuances shortly. That's the bottom line here. Now, what I like a great deal about this article is that they compare the different locations and your income level, this annual income has to do with the federal poverty level. Don't take offense to it. It's just a, you know, their, you know, statistic. And basically, well, as I've said from many other prior videos under Biden care, you can look under my channel and you can just see Biden care. You'll see what over 80% of the most recent 10 videos will, will refer to Biden care. And basically what ends up happening is that the coverage the premiums notably lower. And there's your simple example in Houston, Texas, 250% of FPL, you get your ex exchange coverage at $88 a month, clearly lower than Medicare, which would cost 148 and a half. No question. So this is their point, And you can see a bunch of different other types of you know, statistic, I'm not going to bore you with reading every single one. The link is in the text below the video. It's also in the link on the broadcast for the podcast on the audio version, by the way. So here we go. And then we, what happens is they do again another very nice job of also then taking Medicare and adding either Medigap coverage or Medicare Advantage coverage. As I've told persons in the past, Medigap coverage will be different based on age and location. They have changed it for there, comparing Houston, Miami, LA, Chicago. And you can see it here, a simple example, back to Houston, that $88, right? And then they compare Medicare, which is 148 and a half, they rounded it up, fine. They added a prescription plan, they added Medigap, or they added zero under Medicare Advantage, all good. All good. And then what happens is you get these comparisons, 284 or 149 versus 88. 100% good. Okay. Very useful tool for those persons, you know, if you have no feel for what these comparison pricings look like, they're not news to me. We have clients in every one of these locations. None of these comparisons is new at all. 
When we go down here and you've got other current coverage of individuals, and this is basically giving you a more a demographic look at how many people can apply. Do I find this particularly interesting? Yes, it's telling me it's giving people an idea of how many people can possibly be affected. Okay, that's fine if you're interested in demographic studies. It doesn't really address you, the person, your mother, your senior mother, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You could be a millennial. Your mother is 60 years old. They could be affected right here. Okay, so that's why I call this much more than Medicare. I understand that lots of people are here on the channel because they think they're that the only time it applies for Medicare eligible. Reality is adult age children taking care of senior parents. You're faced with this new language, which is nothing like your individual plan. So I don't really have like a place here to refer to. I just have, you know, kind of my own comments about why this article isn't really the full set of information that I would have wanted to present. Because what ends up happening is, you know, the AP, obviously huge news organization, everyone's going to be picking up this article and then be blasting it to their local website or et cetera, et cetera, or, you know, cut and paste onto different locations. The problem here is it doesn't address, even within the, the report, the report's not complete either, right? Or the way that they've reported on this Avalier Health report isn't exactly right. Remember, number one, is that, yeah, this was talking about the premium. But remember, there's also other aspects to insurance coverage. What are they? Cost sharing, yeah. deductible, copay, coinsurance, right? This is a financial matter. My objective for my clients is to say, fine, let's low, lower the overall cost. Once you wrap all of them up into a ball, let's have the least costly set. That's an important aspect. And so fine, if your job at the hut and you require 90 units of insulin, fine, you may have a lower price plan, but then the co-pays for the insulin, other, doc, other expenses to specialists and tests may be dramatically higher than under Medicare and particularly under Medigap. So now, fine, you've saved yourself. What, what did those graphs say? It, it said, okay, you could maybe save $100 a month for your premium under Biden Care. On the flip side, you've paid thousands of dollars more a year in copay and coinsurance deductible. Now, there are all sorts of shades of gray there, right? Because if you watch my other biting care videos, you'll know that certain plans, certain subsets of plans have lower deductible, lower out-of-pocket maximum. I'm on the radio, you know, over the last couple of months, all over the place to anyone who will listen. So there are all sorts of nuances there, but still, nevertheless, this article doesn't make mention of it, these facts at all. So that's clear shortcoming number one. There are some others. Shortcoming number two is this only compares Medicare compared to individual health insurance plans. The fact of the matter is that many people are covered by employer-sponsored plans. Within that, I'm going to break it into two groups. Small employer, large employer. Very, very complex. So, small employer first. Who are you? You are, you are less than 20 full-time employees. Less than 20 full-time employees. For Medicare purposes, that's what defines a small employer. <clears throat> For you, this is a slam dunk. Medicare eligibility will be superior. Why? Because if you are offered, if you're offered employer-sponsored plan through your small employer, you don't qualify for Biden Care, period, unless you have exceeded 9.83%. That means your premium, which creates a special exception for you. Now we're very, very deep in the weeds. I recognize that. I did have to give you that caveat because somebody's going to throw a rock at me saying you left out this detail. You don't know what you're doing. Okay, there's your answer. All right. 
for the rest, for the overwhelming majority, this is going to be a slam dunk. Why? Because Medicare premium is going to be hundreds of dollars lower than a small employer sponsored plan. This is $5,000 a year to someone, whether that be to the employer or to the employee. It gets more than that because let's just say you're the 64 year old employee with the 59 year old spouse and 25 children. You couldn't get on Biden care, right? But 64 year employee now goes to Medicare under this new proposal, which lowers the eligibility age. What does it also unlock? It unlocks the spouse and the, all the children who then can enroll in Biden care at dramatically lower premiums, both. So for small businesses and their employees, this is slam dunk, slam dunk. It was slam dunk, candidly, for anyone who is Medicare eligible. Right? I've made many friends of, of employers, right? They run a business, they have an employee 65 years old, they go to Medicare, they save, someone saves $5,000 a year and far superior coverage, no question. Second group, oh yeah, by the way, that conclusion in my favorite book, uh, not my favorite book, my favorite book that I've written. Anyway, so large employer, large employer, far more complicated far more complicated. The same thing can be said from a cost point of view. Now the nuances will begin because now the questions will become because now that these differences in network between Medicare Advantage and a group plan at the largest employers, it's going to be real close at the best plans. Going to be really close. These large employers may be paying almost everything for your health insurance. So if you're the single 64 year old person, this is going to be really close. The employer is still going to be incented. No question, right? Because now your cost goes to zero. You go to Medicare. Medicare is still cheaper overall. They can't force you out. That would be illegal. And like I said, going to be highly nuanced. My, uh, what is it, punchline? And the last takeaway before we get in too fur much further down this rabbit hole, and now we've got like a six hour video, is that you, these two topics, these two topics about the, first of all, the overall cost, and then not about the employer plans at all. Neither of these two is mentioned whatsoever in the AP article. It's also not addressed in the Avalier Health Report. That would have been very, very useful input. I am trying to add value somewhere. That's it for this segment. We'll move on to the next one. As usual, the information here on the Much More Than Medicare channel isn't financial advice. For that, I would need a lot more information about you and your personal situation. That said, the headlines have been crazy and no matter what your perspective is, you've not been able to avoid the words Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. We've seen incredible moves. You may have heard stories from your neighbor, your friend, whoever it would be. Cryptocurrency has been on a wild ride. These are virtual currencies, which have timestamps on them, a digital stamp on them, so they can't be duplicated. At any rate, what we've had is an incredible run up. And then quite dramatically over the last few days, a quite a large drawdown, which is another way of saying the price has declined precipitously. You can take a look at some of the statistics, meaning, and these to show you the, from the very high to the low, which happened yesterday, which was Wednesday in the early morning hours. Quite a great decline in a very short period of time. Please remember, right, 
for every price. There's not only a buyer. There's not only a seller. There's one of each. There have to be, right, at every price point. The point of today is really that a couple of things. Number one is there's a, there are cer certain things that are risks that you cannot avoid. And I'm not sure that the general public has a very good handle on it. It doesn't usually get on the headlines. And as you must remember the idea that cryptocurrency replacing actual currency is going to create controversy. It's going to create controversy at the government level. We've already had India. Yesterday, probably the reason for the dramatic decline is we had the same thing in China. So I just posit to you, I just ask you rhetorically this single question. Is that if a country's primary power is to print money and to tax, and cryptocurrency by its nature is set up to provide an alternative platform to those two, currency power as well as taxation power, do you think the governments of the world are going to sit idly by? Just a little food for thought. That's it for today. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you can be told when a new release is available. I'll keep trying to create new content to keep you up to date on financial topics so that you can improve your financial literacy. Thanks for watching.